Well, good morning everyone. Welcome to our service for this Palm Sunday. Um, I managed to find something that looks a little bit like a palm just outside church and I'm on my walk um, to church this morning. So we're going to begin um, our service with the, uh, the reading for this morning, which is a Palm Sunday reading from Luke. So uh, here we go. So Jesus, Jesus went on to Jerusalem, walking ahead of the disciples. As he came to Bethany and Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. He said, go to the village that is over there. As you enter it, you'll see a young donkey that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Tell them the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt. And it was just as they had said. And the owner of the colt said, why are you untying it? And the disciple said, the Lord needs it. As he rode along, the crowd spread out garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road starts to go down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for the miracles they had seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, glory in the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, if they kept quiet, even the stones along the road would burst into cheers. But as he came along, closer to Jerusalem, he saw the city ahead. He began to weep. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace but now it is too late and peace is hidden from your eyes before long your enemies will bring ramparts against you and encircle you and close in on you from every side they will crush you into the ground and your children with you your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when god visited you Then Jesus entered the temple. He began to drive out the people selling animals for sacrifices. He said to them, the scripture says, my temple will be a house of prayer, but you, you have turned it into a den of thieves. After that, he taught daily in the temple, but the leading priests, and the other leaders of the people began planning how to kill him. But they could think of nothing. Because all the people hung on everything he said. Well, there we go. That's the reading for today from Luke's Gospel in a context and we put that in a context today by just walking down the road into church clearly I'm not putting myself in the Jesus role and Homeland's free church isn't the temple as we well know but it's real Jesus made a real journey in real places walking down a real path a real road and here we are. We're at Palm Sunday. We've journeyed together this far, friends. So now we're in Homelands. Welcome. Welcome properly. Welcome to all of you, whether you'd be normally here with me on a Sunday, whether you normally you'd be elsewhere, whether um, you might not normally be in church at all. Welcome. It's good to have you along. We're getting to a rhythm now. We're going to do the same thing today as we've done 
on the last few Sundays, a prayer, a reading, a reflection, those kind of things. But this week we continue our journey. We continue our journey to Easter. So um, we're going to have um, some short Facebook Lives, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday coming up. Um, and then on Monday, Thursday, a, an As Live YouTube as a Tenebrae service and Good Friday and Easter Sunday morning back on Facebook as a live. And on Easter Sunday morning, as you might have heard me say on the video earlier this week, on Easter Sunday morning, we're going to have communion together. Um, so be prepared for that if you can have something to eat and to drink. Um, it doesn't have to be bread and wine, but something to eat and drink so we can share together as we're scattered and yet joined together in the body of Christ. That would be lovely. But that's next week, next Sunday. So that's advanced notice. Folk, continue to gather. Let's pray. Loving God, we lay before you all that we are, all that we bring, the good and the bad. Our riches and our poverty, our strengths and our weaknesses. We confess our sins before you in penitence and faith, for we are not a forsaken people. Lord, hear the cries of our hearts and have mercy upon us. God's face shines upon us. God has given us light. We trust God to save us. Hosanna, God, our God, hear the cry of our hearts and save us. Amen. So we've heard a traditional Palm Sunday reading, the version from Luke. But Psalm 118 is another text that's often used. And that too can speak, speak particularly in these difficult days to us. So let's hear the verses at the beginning of Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let all Israel repeat, his faithful love endures forever. Let Aaron's descendants, the priests, repeat, his faithful love endures forever. Let all who fear the Lord repeat. His faithful law, love endures forever. In my distress, I prayed to the Lord and the Lord answered me and set me free. Just the opening five verses there of Psalm 118, a psalm of procession, another psalm, another journey to Jerusalem. A call and response psalm, a hymn, a triumph song of the faithful, a song of thanks and praise and a victory. The Hebrew words that we're translating into English here as please save, which appear throughout the psalm, these words please save in Hebrew are hosh e a na, which has become in many other languages hosanna. Hosanna, please save. And at the Feast of the Tabernacles, the Jewish nation, the Jewish people would have processed around the temple holding willow branches, reciting verses from this psalm. They would have been marking the end of harvest and reminding themselves of the exodus, the tent of meeting, the tabernacle of the Lord covered in branches. The prayers may well have been prayers for rain, prayers of thanks for a successful harvest, but they developed over the years into wide ranging pleas for salvation and for liberation. Please save, set us free. Friends, perhaps how they resonate so deeply for us in our context today. Lord, save us. Lord, set us free. If you were with us just earlier in Luke's account, you'll have heard the story of Jesus's entry into Jerusalem. Very familiar words indeed. But in Luke's account, there are no palms and no hosannas, just cries of blessings and peace. No huge crowd, just 
perhaps Jesus's followers and a few people on the way in Luke's account. A stripped back version perhaps of Palm Sunday. Lay bare, no palms, no huge crowds. And perhaps for us this year, out of necessity, out of our context, Easter is going to be stripped back, laid bare. We hear a lot in the media about things that are essential, food that is essential, journeys that are essential. I wonder what is essential for us this Easter. Are those cries of help, Lord, please save us, more pointed, more poignant than usual? So why does Luke tell the story in this way? Why are there no palms or crowds that perhaps other gospel writers emphasise? We often think of Luke writing for a non-Jewish audience. So he's perhaps playing down the nationalistic fervour, less of the military saviour, no triumphal entry. But it's still a deeply subversive text, a deeply subversive passage because in the Roman context the only one who would bring peace would be the emperor. The Pax Romana, the peace of the Roman Empire, belonged to the godlike emperor himself and Jesus is taking that place. Luke has Jesus travelling south. He's come to Bethpage, to Bethany, the scene of last week's story of Martha and Mary and Lazarus near the Mount of Olives about a Sabbath day journey from Jerusalem. And Luke begins with Jesus walking ahead of the disciples, not with them at this time, but separate, leading, perhaps showing the way. And what would that mean for us today to have Jesus walking ahead? Jesus taking us perhaps into strange and unfamiliar places. We're led by Jesus. This isn't Jesus as a cosy friend in our pocket to use as we want, but Jesus leading. We're not taking Jesus to places. Jesus is taking us to places, taking our lives on, turning them inside out, disturbing them, changing them and challenging them. There are also lots of interesting subplots in this text. We don't have time to explore them all. For example, what about the owner, the owners of the colt, the donkey? They seem to give up their animal with very little fuss or pushback. And what about us? When Jesus challenges us, when we're asked to do things, maybe at this season, do we say yes immediately or do we fight tooth and nail to keep and cling to the familiar and what we think we possess. Faith, as we've said through this season, is about uncertainty as much as anything else, about trusting, about looking and pointing, trusting an unknown situation, an unknown future to a known God. It's not about easy answers or right answers or off-pat answers but it's certainly about asking the right questions and choosing the right people and things to follow. But anyway, back to the story. And we're in Bethany, coming from the east of the city, a Sabbath day's walk. And Jesus walked down, as I walked down Garden Road here in Walton earlier, across the Kid Kidron Valley, down into Jerusalem. Hugely significant geographic location. Zechariah talks of the Messiah appearing in this location. The dead, the Jewish dead, were thought to rise first because Jesus ascended from that point. Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane at the foot of the Mount of Olives just before his arrest. Jesus is coming down the hill, down the valley, into a Jewish city at a Jewish festival time at Passover. We've mentioned the Romans and no doubt the Romans were already nervous on their guard, wary about trouble at the big religious festivals. 
And we can imagine as Jesus comes in from the east, perhaps Roman reinforcements are arriving from the coastal side, from the west, coming in from the other side. Two power bases, very different and vying for the attention of the people coming to Jerusalem. Is Jesus the great liberator, the one to set the people free from Roman oppression, like Moses to set the people free, like David to lead and be king? But if he was going to do that, he might go to the main square, a gathering point. He doesn't go there, he goes to the temple and he comes into the temple and warns the people of the dangers of not listening and not following. But back perhaps to some of those subplots, the owners of the donkey, what about them? But where are we in this story? How do we move from being spectators this season to participants? How is this not just another retelling of a familiar story? Where are we? Where do we find our place? Perhaps we might find ourselves with the disciples following after Jesus, looking for him, uncertain, puzzled, but walking on in faith still with our questions. Perhaps we're in the crowd, some of those people who were watching. Perhaps we're cheering, but are we, friends, just as likely to yell for Barabbas as we are to praise the Saviour? Perhaps we're the Roman authorities, the temple authorities, the rule keepers, the ones who are keen to point out others' errors and waywardness. What are they doing? They're not following the rules. It all sounds very, very fresh, very familiar, doesn't it? Or perhaps, perhaps this Palm Sunday, at this season, with a donkey. Tired sat upon, forgotten, misused. Wherever we are, I implore you, friends, to be honest with yourselves and with God about where you find yourself. For Jesus is the one who liberates, not in the way perhaps the people expected, but he is the one who sets us free from our fears, from our disconnection, from our mourning of the things that we had that are no longer perhaps possible for us at the moment. Jesus doesn't come to wave a magic wand or in might and power to sweep away all the difficulties and put everything right now. That is for another day. For now, our journey continues. Our journey continues in what we would call now Holy Week. Reflections. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So join in with those. Why not journey with us, with Jesus this season? Really find your place in the story. Perhaps even for the first time, you find your place in the Easter story, in the story of liberation, in the story of being set free from all that holds us, our past, our present, and our future is certain with Jesus. His faithful love, God's faithful love, endures forever. Hosanna, Hosanna, Lord, save us. We're going to end as we began with Psalm 118, this time the concluding verses from verse 19. Open for me the gates where the righteous enter and I will go in and thank the Lord. These gates lead to the presence of the Lord and the godly enter there. I thank you for answering my prayer, giving me victory. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and is wonderful to see. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray. Loving God, we pray that you would open the gates of right living and the gates of right relationship so that we might enter and give thanks to you. We pray for the nations of the world, for healing and justice and freedom. We pray for our own nation, for healing and unity and generosity. We pray for our communities, for healing, perception and openness. We pray for our churches for healing and kindness and truth. We pray for ourselves for healing and grace and humility. Lord, open the gate that we might follow the King who rides on a donkey into the kingdom of God. Let the same mind be in us, the same love, the same compassion as found in Jesus. Let us empty ourselves, humble ourselves and in obedience follow Jesus to the foot of the cross. Hosanna, Lord save us. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us. Look forward to seeing you all again very soon. But bye for now. Take care. God bless.